Is it not wonderful that your device can recognize you and your friends in your photos? Also the friends of your friends. Even the people who aren't your friends, which is everybody. But is it a good thing that your device has this power of finding and tagging you anywhere? Let's find out in today's episode of The Pretentious Geek. It all began years ago, when a free and always will be friend Facebook asked if we could tag our friends in our photos. Obediently, we complied. After all, tagging people in your photos was an effective way of increasing likes. These images were then fed into deep neural networks which then learned what a face was. And another set of neural networks worked on comparing the different features of the face, such as distance between the eyes, the size of the nose, etc. until they learned how to differentiate between faces. Fast forward to today, billions of photos and computations later, real-time facial recognition is at the fingertips of the powers that would be. A tool with tons of profound applications. Known fugitives could be caught as soon as they are in public areas. The search for missing people, missing kids could become much easier. Blind people could recognize other people with just their phones. And the plot of Mento would become much simpler. Or not. Who the hell knows? Anyway. In light of such a power, there's bound to be abuse of it. It is well within human rights, the right not to be recognized. So a regulation of this technology is a must. But before we go there, let's see how far the technology has actually come. Facial recognition has advanced enormously over the last decade. Between 2014 and 2019, the algorithms have become 20 times more accurate, with error rates down to a mere 0.2%. But these numbers depend on ideal conditions, with clean mugshots, blur in the photos, facial hair, or skewed angles all tend to reduce the accuracy. Last year, Amazon's recognition falsely identified 28 members of American Congress as already convicted criminals. South Wales police also attempted to use the tech in public, but when Cardiff University reviewed it, out of the 2,900 red flags, 2755 were found to be false positives. Aww. So the technology is far from perfect and all the numbers which make it sound so flawless are just not realistic. No one can deny that identification of criminals is a benefit to a society, but no one is willing to give up their right to privacy for this purpose. To quote Edward Snowden, arguing that you don't care about privacy because you don't have anything to hide is no different than saying that you don't care about free speech because you don't have anything to say. Facial recognition technology may prove to be a huge boon, but if history has taught us anything is that such weapons often get misused. So some questions regarding the regulations should definitely precede the public as well as the preemptive application of this technology. Should there be civilian oversight? Can unwarranted facial recognition be admissible as evidence? And should the technology be subject to a minimum level of accuracy benchmark? And those are just off the top of my stupid head. Looking for data science news? You won't find it in a newspaper. Subscribe to Analytics India magazine and keep watching The Pretentious Geek.